How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a tool that I think is very, very underutilized across the industry. It's a tool that once you get used to using it, it gets you out of a sticky situation. You'll end up reaching for it more and more often. It is a tool that also crosses over into other industries as well. And that tool is an air hammer. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the uses I've had for this tool over the years and how it could benefit you in some of the jobs you might be getting stuck on. Okay, so the first question I usually get asked when showing this tool is, what jobs do you use that for and why would I need it? This is an air hammer for anyone that has never used one of these, you may consider purchasing one in a few moments time when I go through all the list of what these can actually benefit you on. I used this originally back in the day, first and foremost on body work. So I did mechanical and body work side by side and this was used for taking off panels. So the likes of quarter panels that would be welded or wings that could potentially even be sealed on this was used and the attachments that come with this are vast and wide ranging but this was one of the most common type attachments that i would have used a chisel of some sort it can be an angle one can be a flat one can be wide narrow blade very thin at the top lots of different options this one that I have now is an upgraded one that I got a couple of years back. Reason I got this is it's more powerful, nicer grip, and it has a quick release coupler. So how you install the likes of this attachments in this type of fitting is you simply pull that back and insert that bit into it. In the older style version, they have a spring clip. You would just move the clip to the side and put the bit in it. And to install this is as follows. You pull down on the quick release coupler and in goes the chisel. And then that's able to be hooked up to the airline and this is gonna vibrate in and out and it's gonna absolutely chew through that panel. Light steel, even heavier grade steel panels, this was able to rip through them like a knife through butter. So you were able to do front panels, quarter panels, and remove and clean up items very, very easily and effectively. A second job that I used it on, which was very common, was exhaust. Um, you can get exhaust that's damaged. You can get exhaust on the on the joints, uh, you know, on the back, the rear exhaust or the um, rear muffler, as it's called over here, where they would be seized on the actual pipe. You can use this to spread, enlarge that pipe and then pull the exhaust off. So they were the two predominant jobs I always used this tool on. One of the most recent jobs I decided to, to try this out on was removing the stubborn part of a wheel bearing. That inner part that gets stuck on the hub, I decided I would grab this tool and see how it would perform in taking it off. And in this video I'm gonna insert now, you're gonna see firsthand this tool in use. So what you see in there was the actual part of the bearing sleeve had just enough of a lip where I could use an attachment and then use the vibration to shake that off 
and it moves it outwards consistently as it's shaking it free. So once it gets it moving, you're gonna be able to take that off very, very easily. That's just one option that you have the likes of this tool for. Now, the other ones, which is the more common that I use this on, when you don't have a bush removal kit of some sort, and you need to take out the likes of a wishbone bush, lower control arm bush, that rearmost bush that fails, you can get them online, you can get them from your parts supplier and you can replace them. It requires taking them out and then reinstalling them. Taking them out using this can be very, very easy. You just have to aim it in the right direction, make sure you're not damaging the surface area where the sleeve sits into, but in these videos, I'm just going to show you some bushes being removed using a similar tool to this one. Now I have access to the bush I want to replace. So next we'll be popping that out. So we have the new bush here. That's to be fitted. And the tools that we're going to be using to take it out is um, these air chisels here with different points. What you want to do is compress all the way around the edge like that with the air chisel until it's compressed inwards um, the full distance around. Then we'll change the tip to uh, more of a punch and pop it out. We have got the bushing removed. Now there is a couple of things to note when doing the likes of this. There is other tools to remove these. Um, some people may even take out more components and put it in a in a press. But if used cautiously, the air chisel compressing just the edge, not going in any further, um, because if you were to press in any harder, you can damage the surface in further. So if you do go the air chisel route, you have to be cautious to angle it the right way. Just press in the edges, which as you can see, can will compress it in like that. And then it's simply hitting the hammer and it moves it out that way. I have it set up in the vise here. And as you can see, that is completely worn out. And right there is the heavy, heavy amount of corrosion that's inbuilt in that. But the next step will be to uh, mark this up, line it up and then take it out. Always a good idea to mark the old bush before you remove it. That way you know exactly which way it's to be pressed in again. So you can see where the layout will be and mark beyond it and down past it. So when you're pushing it out, even if some of it gets rubbed off, you will still have the marks to, to line up. Okay, that is a final line up, mark for mark, before I start to take out the old one. So I'm gonna remove that now. And this is the tool I'll be using here. So you have air chisel. And then there is all these different tips that I will be um, using to punch it out. So now you have a very good idea of how beneficial this can be. The next thing is the amount of different attachments you can get for this. You can get hammer tips, you can get punches, you can get attachments that put sockets on, you likes of your half inch and three eighth attachments. All the different wide ranges of chisels and you can also get like uh, Torx bits um, that you can sit on when you have the attachments and screw. Um, the likes of your um, Phillips head, flat head, all of them can be used to um, attach onto your air hammer in one way or another and it's going to rattle frozen threads loose. So when you have seeds, bolts, nuts, screws and you're struggling to get them out, if you have the right attachment, 
you can use this tool to take them out. So this tool does cross over to other industries as well. Removing tiles I know is a common use for this. It absolutely chews through them. You're gonna get a wide face chisel. You're gonna aim it underneath and you're gonna rip the flooring or the tiling on the walls off very, very easily using the likes of this tool. The other one is lino laminate flooring, timber flooring that's been bonded down you can use the likes of this tool to rip up the likes of those items. So it's got a wide range of uses, not something you're gonna grab every day, but when you need it, you will be very, very happy that you have it in your kit. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you're interested, I will include the links for this tool in the description. It's a 114 GQC Ingersoll Rand Air Hammer Edge Series and it's 3,500 BPM. I found it a fantastic tool so far and I will include the links in the description if anyone is interested in it. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.